I remember the uncertainty that surrounded the Pokemon franchise as it was moving to the Nintendo Switch in early 2018. If I had to summarize the direction as I saw it at the time in one word, it would have been worry. Not to be super selfish with my own experiences or anything, but they were trending downwards with each release in the 3DS era for the most part, with one exception. So 2018 came and went, and my nervousness about the series' future mostly stayed consistent through the release of Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu. That's a game I thought had a lot of good ideas, but didn't really scratch the itch for a new Pokemon game for someone who's played every generation. And then in 2019, the actual next Pokemon game was announced, and the internet hated it. Or at least hated the idea of it. Somewhat because the first few times the game was shown off, it looked a bit too much like an upscaled 3DS game with the reused Pokemon models and the N64 looking tree that somehow went viral, but mostly because they told everyone that not every Pokemon would be making the trip to the Galar region. But we all know about Dexit. Chances are, even if you've never wanted to play a Pokemon game in your life but have clicked on this video because you're interested in gaming, you've still heard about Dexit. Moving on. Waves of pessimism and optimism traded blows on my lead up to getting my copy of Pokemon Shield, and I'm pleased to say the optimistic side was the one to favor. Pokemon Shield is not only the best Pokemon game in several years, I wouldn't hesitate to call it the best since Gen 5's Pokemon Black and White, with the tiniest of disclaimers to say I never played Black 2 or White 2. As a first impression, it might not have impressed many, but I found the Gala region absolutely gorgeous. It was a ton of fun to see all the different areas that Game Freak designed, and there's a ton of variety. I was impressed with the final city of Winden. Thought it was cool to see a seaside town like Hullbury. I loved the aesthetic of Bal and Leia, and the soccer pitch styled gym arenas were a treat every time I entered one. Everything just looks so good. From the character design, to the updated trainer models, to the scenery, it's just a really pretty game. That said, it does make the reused Pokemon models more glaring than it otherwise would be, but it's something I'm willing to overlook, because honestly, the hate for these particular Switch Pokemon models is a little bit overblown in my opinion. The evolution to the graphics to the Switch has resulted, finally, in a consistently good looking 3D Pokemon main series game for arguably the first time. In any case, what shouldn't be debatable is the continuation of us getting consistently excellent Pokemon designs, something that thankfully hasn't stopped even through the more underwhelming games. Something that's also excellent is the music, which is one of the strongest soundtracks in the entire series, and one that thankfully doesn't repeat too many Gen 1 songs within them. They chose to evolve in this regard as well, rather than rely on nostalgia, and I thank them very much for that. The new additions we got are also excellent. The wild area, while a little underused in the main plot, is a lot of fun to explore, and the Pokemon Camp is a delightful addition that helped me start to love yet another evolution, much to the delight of my friends who are already annoyed by me talking about them far too much. Perhaps my favorite part of the experience though is the AI behind trainer battles, which is, I'm pleased to say, excellent. In my experience playing through the game normally, which is to say I didn't overpower my team by grinding more than an average player would have, I found the AI consistently challenging enough to the point where I needed to strongly strategize my battles and find the right team for every solution. Even post-game in the March Madness-esque tournaments, I found that even with teams that were more than solid, a bad matchup with, say, an Ice-type trainer at the wrong time could result in an upset and lose me the match. It's something that with enough game time will probably end, but it's something I've been missing from the Pokemon experience lately, and it's something that personally really impressed me. There's also that Battle Tower, which rewards you with currency to buy items that are relevant in the competitive scene, and the Daycare, which is conveniently next to a long bridge so you can hatch and breed eggs quickly and without too much tedium. It just feels like a really complete package, and maybe I'm being too optimistic, but it feels like one that should please even the most skeptical Pokemon fans, especially with the upcoming DLC on the way that also feels like attention was thrown to an equal balance between casual and competitive players. There are things I'd criticize, of course. For a couple things, I wish the wild area was more integrated within the plot, though it seems like they're fixing that a bit in the DLC, and I wish the max raid battles were less tedious. I get what they were doing with them, and I've done them on occasion with friends, but they really weren't for me. And yeah, even though I got fairly lucky with the Dexit controversy, issues with it popped up for several of my friends, and that sucks. Sometimes a game of the year for me is something that deeply impacts me or moves me emotionally. Sometimes it's just a fun experience I play a lot of. 
Pokemon Shield was the latter, and I'm happy that it provided exactly what I was hoping for, both in offline play and playing with friends. I think of it highly as a game, I think it'll appeal to most fans of the series, and I had a blast playing it alone and online. That's why Pokemon Shield is my Game of the Year.